Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Brian Metcalf, and I will serve as your Master of Ceremonies for today's event. Welcome to the Naval Sea Systems Command Change of Command Ceremony. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors, the national anthem, and our invocation. Bosun, post the side, boys. Naval Sea Systems Command, acting, arriving. <laughs> Vice Admiral, United States Navy. Arriving. <phone rings> Naval operations. Arriving. Present arms. Advance the colors.
And salute. And salute. Coach! 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 Present! Oh! Ready, two. Retire the colors. Ready, step. Bosun, retire the side boys. Captain David Stroud, Regional Chaplain, Naval District, Washington, will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is with humble hearts that we gather together this afternoon to witness the transfer of authority and responsibility from one officer to another. We are tempted to view it as just another ceremony like countless others we've attended. But when we pause to consider the size and scope of Naval Sea Systems Command, we begin to think differently. When we read the bios in our program, we are struck by the days, months, and years of work and experience that have been poured into our leaders here today. When we think of the almost 87,000 civilian and military personnel who will look to this office for leadership, we start to grasp the importance of today's events. And finally, when we are reminded that your scripture tells us that all authority in heaven and on earth is given by you, we stand in awe that our creator is invested in what we say and do here today. We thank you for blessing NAVC with Rear Admiral Anderson, whom you have placed here to fill the breach and carry this team forward. We thank you for blessing NAVC with Vice Admiral Downey, whom you have chosen for just such a time as this. We ask that you bless us with your presence and that your presence would bless this event to adequately honor all this means to these two leaders, their families, our Navy, our nation, and your purpose. For we ask it in your holy name. Amen. Guests, please be seated. It is now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Admiral Franchetti is a career surface warfare officer who brings a wealth of operational and key leadership experience to our Navy. We are privileged to have her with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 33rd Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Lisa Franchetti. Thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you everyone for being here today. What an amazing day for all of you and the entire NAVC team as we take a minute to celebrate past accomplishments while looking forward to all that we will achieve together in the future. Let me also offer my thanks to the Navy Band and the Color Guard for all they add to today's celebration. Please give me a big round of applause. Join me in thanking them for what they've done today.
Secretary Girton, thank you very much for being here, and thank and congratulations on your recent confirmation as Assistant Secretary for Navy Research Development and Acquisition. We all look forward to working with you to get after our Navy's toughest challenges. How about a big round of applause for our new Secretary? <laughs> to Anne and Mazetta Zumwalt, daughters of CNO Admiral Zumwalt, so glad and honored that you could be with us today. Your father had a profound effect on our Navy, as well as a profound effect on me in my development and my opportunities as a Naval officer and now as CNO, a legacy that could not be summed up in words. And to all of our distinguished guests, Secretary Stackley, Secretary Gertz, Admiral Caldwell, fellow flag and general officers, senior executive service leaders, our industry partners, sailors and civilians of NAVC, friends and family, good afternoon and happy new year. It is truly an honor to be with you as we ring in 2024. You know, just a few minutes ago before this ceremony, I had the privilege of promoting Jim Downey. So before I get into my remarks, let us please recognize the Navy's newest Vice Admiral, Vice Admiral Jim Downey. Again, thank you all for being here today to bear witness to this time-honored tradition where we transfer the responsibility of Naval Sea Systems Command from one commander to the next. This ceremony, as we've already discussed, is a significant event for NAVC. It's not just another ceremony. It's an amazing and an important day for NAVC, our Navy, and especially for Tom Anderson, Jim Downey, and their families. Tom, thank you very much for stepping up and taking on the tremendous responsibility of leading NAVC, one of our oldest and largest CISCOMs over these last four very busy months. You and your team have continued to drive positive outcomes with urgency through your tireless commitment to our Navy and our nation. But before I talk about the incredible work of your team, I want to recognize your family the foundation of your career, your service, and everything that you do, because they are the ones that have made all of this possible. I want to personally thank Tom's wife, Debbie, and kids, Alexandra and Tom, for all they have done in support of our nation. Debbie, Tom refers to you as his best friend and greatest supporter. What an extraordinary partner you have been. Serving alongside him for the past 32 years, dealing with what probably feels like endless moves and deployments. You've been the rock of the family, an incredible mother of two children, often doing it alone and unafraid, while your husband was doing the fun stuff on all of our Navy's work. And you did it all while serving our country as a civil servant for the FBI. Debbie, thank you very much for your service and sacrifice and for giving so much of yourself to our Navy and our nation. How about a big round of applause for Debbie? <laughs> to the Anderson kids, Alex and Tom, I know it wasn't easy to be a Navy kid, moving around, changing schools, making new friends every couple of years. And Alex, who is here virtually watching, is a graduate student at the University of Pittsburgh studying biomedical science. And Tom is, is his dad's neighbor right here at NAVC working in foreign military sales. Alex and Tom, I really want to thank you as well for your service and your sacrifice. I promise you that the gift of your dad's time has made our Navy and our nation much stronger. So congratulations and thank you to you. So now back to Tom and the work the NAVC team has done under his leadership to ensure that our fleet remains responsive to the needs of our nation. Tom, you stepped up to the plate, taking command of NAVC during a period of uncertainty as we waited confirmation of many of our flag officers, and you simply knocked it out of the park. In the short time you were in command, NAVC accomplished many things. And let me just highlight a few. You delivered the USS Hyman G. Rickover, SSN 795, Aegis Ashore, Poland. You obligated 99.9% .9 of our FY23 funds you provided me with a thoughtful 90-day assessment 
on the state of the NAVC enterprise, and you ensured that all of our fleet assets were ready to respond to the increased demand signal in the Middle East following Hamas's unprovoked attack on Israel. And just two weeks ago, PEO unmanned and small combatants accepted delivery of our Navy's first ORCA, extra-large unmanned undersea vehicle, marking a critical milestone as we work towards fielding our future fleet, a global hybrid maritime force of manned and unmanned platforms. And right now, that same team is working on disruptive and emerging technologies to get operationally relevant capabilities in the hands of our warfighters for today and for tomorrow's fight. Tom, this is just a small sprinkling of the significant accomplishments that you are able to achieve during your time. And I know you are very, very proud of the NAVC team that made all of this and much more happen on your watch. Thank you for your leadership and for continuing to drive forward with a sense of urgency in this critical decade. I know you're not going far, and I wish you all the best as you return to an equally important position within NAVC, first doing some good work for Secretary Girton, and then transitioning back to your previous role as Program Executive Officer for PEO Ships. How about a big round of applause for Tom and all that he's accomplished? And that takes us to your relief, Vice Admiral Jim Downey. Jim, I know that you are ready to step right in as NAVC's 46th commander. Your 36 years of naval service have included some of the most challenging positions in the community. Those who have had the pleasure of serving with you highlight your tireless work ethic and selfless dedication to the mission and to the team. You bring the exact type of professional experience and energy we need for the immense responsibility of leading this complex command. Your most recent work as PEO aircraft carriers from June of 2019 to July 2023 illustrates this point. Working through some very tough challenges, you are instrumental in delivering the USS Gerald R. Ford to the fleet and ensuring that she was ready for her first full deployment. Because of your work, your leadership, and that of the PEO Carriers team, the Ford Carrier Strike Group has performed magnificently on her maiden deployment. As you all know, most recently, she's been on station in the Eastern Mediterranean, delivering decisive combat power, deterring both state and non-state actors from escalating the Israel-Hamas conflict beyond Gaza, and working to guarantee the free flow of commerce across the region. Jim, you are the right person at the right time to lead the over 88,000 employees of the NAVC team who are stationed around the globe as the force behind the fleet at this crucial moment in our nation's history. I'd also like to welcome and recognize the service of Jim's family, his wife Jill, his mother Ethel, and his sister Susan, as well as his kids Jasper, who is over in Nepal doing work in college at GMU, and Jax, who's at Jackson Reed today, just starting up school in his junior year in high school. Of course, they are all so proud of you. And we want to thank all of you for your perseverance in these challenging times and for your continued support of your son, of your husband, of your brother, and of your dad as he moves into this new role. How about a big round of applause for Jim's family? Jim, I know this day couldn't come a minute too soon, and you are ready to get started. Secretary Del Toro is unable to be here today due to an unexpected family emergency, but he asked me to pass on to you his confidence and his excitement as you take on this new role. We are all proud to see you take the helm of this organization, one that is so vital to generating naval power. Now more than ever, it is important that our Navy and Marine Corps team has experienced leaders in place to confront the global challenges we face in every domain, on, under, and above the sea, as well as in space and cyberspace. Jim, you are that right leader 
Congratulations, and we all look forward to working with you. How about a big round of applause for Jim? So before I get off the stage, I would definitely be remiss if I didn't take a minute to brag about our Navy Marine Corps team and all that NAVC contributes as a key part of that team every single day. First, everyone here or watching from afar should take great pride in knowing that our sailors and our Marines are underway around the world on platforms designed, built, delivered, and maintained by the NAVC team. In fact, right now, more than 40% of our fleet is operating far forward in multiple locations around the world simultaneously. We're defending NATO and ensuring Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a strategic failure in Europe. We're deterring the People's Republic of China and ensuring the sea lines of communication remain open in the Indo-Pacific. We're preventing the escalation of conflict beyond Gaza in the Israel-Hamas war. And we're leading Operation Prosperity Guardian, a multinational maritime security coalition designed to enable the free flow of commerce in light of the severe security challenges in the Southern Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. And in just the last two months, ships that were delivered and maintained by NAVC, the Thomas Hudner, the Kearney, the Laboon, and the Mason have performed superbly under significant threat, intercepting missiles and drones, responding to acts of piracy, and aiding vessels in distress. And although we often focus and talk about on the platforms that we can see making a difference, we can't forget about the contributions of our silent service. Our submarine fleet is on patrol 24-7 to support our national security interests and deliver our nation's strategic deterrence. All thanks to the NAVC team worldwide that remains dedicated to maintaining our competitive advantage in the undersea domain. The reality is that all of our Navy's warships are successful in their assigned missions because of the work done right here at NAVC by NAVC professionals. And this is no easy task. Every single ship and submarine across the spectrum of its service life, from design, construction, and delivery, to modernization, maintenance, and sustainment, depends on the NAVC enterprise. And this NAVC enterprise depends on the 88,000 sailors and civilians who do it all behind the scenes, far away from the limelight that each of you really deserve. So to the NAVC team, thank you. Whether you wear a uniform or a suit, thank you for answering our nation's call to service. Your work ensures that our Navy can operate forward 24 hours a day 365 days a year to preserve the peace, respond in crisis, prepare for war, and be ready to win decisively if called. Each of you helps put more players on the field, on time, and on budget. And more players is not just about the numbers. It's about more players that are capable and ready with the right weapons and the right sustainment to deliver decisive combat power whenever and wherever it's needed. I know that all of this takes a team effort and great leadership. It's a team effort that will continue to require the robust support and clear communication across the entire NAVC organization, from the PEOs and directorates down to subordinate commands, so that all of our sailors and Marines can have the platforms and systems that they need to defend our nation. Again, what you do on a daily basis matters to our Navy and to our nation. To the entire NAVC enterprise, again, thank you for what you do every day. As I wrap up today, let me again say bravo Zulu to Tom Anderson for a job well done and congratulations to Jim Downey. Jim, as you well know, the challenges we face are only accelerating and I'm confident that you and the NAVC team will move out boldly with urgency and a strong sense of purpose to deliver the fleet our sailors, Marines, and indeed our nation needs to fight and win at sea today 
and in the future. Secretary Del Toro, Assistant Secretary Girton, and I all stand ready to support you in any way we can. And let me just say that all ahead flank is authorized. Again, it is truly an honor to be with you today for this afternoon's ceremony. I wish you, the entire NAVC enterprise, and all of your families all the best in the new year. And thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Thomas J. Anderson, Acting Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. All right. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Admiral Franchetti, Admiral Downey, distinguished guests, family and friends, and members of this awesome NAVC team, thank you for being here today. We really did luck out. When Jim, Jim talked to me about an outdoor ceremony, I was a little concerned, but clearly he got it right. This is awesome. Uh, what a great Navy day for what is a unique NAVC change of command. I say unique because the outgoing Com NAVC is normally retiring, several in the audience here, and the speeches contain a career full of wonderful memories. In this case, despite it being an action-packed 124 days, it's not going to be that kind of speech. Instead, my remarks today are about gratitude for the opportunity to contribute at this level, opportunities being pursued to rig NAVC for speed, and pride in the accomplishments of NAVC's workforce and their unwavering commitment to our Navy and Marine Corps. Admiral Franchetti, thank you for your generous words, the opportunity to serve in this impactful position, and your steadfast support during my tenure. I remain humble and energized by your and Secretary Del Toro's selection of me as acting NAVC. With the newfound perspective that I have from this experience, I look forward to continuing to serve where you need me in the relentless pursuit of generating the Navy our nation needs. Thank you, ma'am. To the NAVC Enterprise Leadership Team, Ms. Fan, Admiral Verhaeg, NAVC Directors, PEOs and Executive Directors, I shared with you on day one that I was going to drive it like I stole it. I could tell by your facial expressions that afternoon, some were excited to get after it and some were terrified. In the end, we got a lot of good done in a relatively short period of time. I thank you for getting me up to speed quickly and for being the courageous followers that I needed you to be during my tenure. This experience has reinforced for me the belief that when we were pulling together with an enterprise mindset, we will not only achieve better outcomes for our individual areas of responsibility, but for the Navy as a whole. I look forward to joining you under Vice Admiral Downey's leadership in getting after it across NAVC. To the NAVC workforce, it has been an honor to lead this exceptional team, and it is an exceptional team. The breadth and depth of your contributions to our operational forces are hard for many to fathom. Whether delivering capability in the form of new platforms forms like USS Hyman G. Rickover, or weapon systems like SPY-6 and Aegis ashore Poland, providing in-service support to operating units like those responding in uh, the Middle East, conducting diving and salvage, salvage operations like Black Hawk search and recovery efforts in the Mediterranean, and the list goes on and on. Strengthening relationships and industrial-based connections with partner nations like via AUKUS, you execute with excellence and resolve at a pace and at scale. And while we rightfully celebrate our wins, we know that in this decisive decade, our Navy needs even more from us. You motivate me with your embrace of that challenge. Under the mantra of the force behind the fleet, and through your drive to self-assess and improve to ensure you are doing what is required to generate and sustain the Navy's, the world's number one Navy. Thank you, team, for all your efforts both those behind us and those in front of us. If I can please have an, a round of applause for the NAVC workforce. <laughs> NAVC, I'm leaving you in highly capable hands with a leader who shares your passion and drive for delivering outcomes for our sailors and Marines. Admiral Downey, it's been a great pleasure working turnover with you. I know the transition window was a little longer than you had hoped for, 
about four months, two days. Uh, <laughs> but I'm confident we made the best of the available time that we had. As you are certainly aware, you are about to have the most impactful tour of your impressive career. You have a highly capable and motivated workforce and a noble mission of global importance at a critical time. How awesome is that, right? I know you're up for the task. I look forward to working with you in the noble pursuit of world-class performance for our Navy. And ultimately, I'm excited about the outcomes you are gonna generate as ComNavC. Admiral, congratulations. <laughs> Last but not least, to my family. Another one in the records book, Andersons, right? Okay, Debbie, Tom, my wonderful daughter, Alex, who's watching from home in God's country, Pittsburgh. Yes, right, there we go. Thank you for your support of me and our Navy. I know I am up for whatever the Navy needs of me with you in my corner. I love you and I appreciate you, thank you. I will now read my orders. Guests, please rise. CNO order number 3453, orders for Rear Admiral Thomas J. Anderson, when directed by reporting senior, detach in January 2024, NAVC Systems Command, and report for duty as program executive officer for ships. Command Master Chief, haul down my flag. Rear Admiral Anderson will now be presented his personal flag by Command Master Chief Blake Schimmel. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral James P. Downey, United States Navy. I will now read my orders. CNO order number 3403, orders for Vice Admiral James P. Downey, when directed by reporting senior, detach in December 2023, and report for duty as Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. Command Master Chief Schimmel, break my flag.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my honor to introduce Vice Admiral James P. Downey, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. Well, good morning, everyone. What a beautiful January Navy Day. It is a little unnerving. I'm looking at everybody here, and I got current and future, prior bosses just to my side, just within uh, poking distance. I'll, I'll call it that for right now. Um, but thank you all for taking the time to be here, especially with all your busy schedules, uh, not only to attend, but really to participate in this change of command ceremony. So, you know, thank you very much for being here and presiding over the change of command. We are extremely grateful for your leadership across the Navy. I understand and embrace the performance requirements needed of NAVC, and I am motivated more than ever for this team to deliver. Deliver for you, our Navy, our nation, our allies, and most importantly, for our shipmates. I welcome all of you here. Our shipmates work in these issues uh, for our Navy every day. They're managers and supervisors in our leadership. In addition to the uh, CNO, I certainly want to recognize our current and former secretaries and leadership here. Uh, our most recently confirmed RDA, uh, the Honorable Gurton, thank you, sir, very much for being here. I really look forward to working together and supporting you in our efforts to meet the secretary and the CNO's goals. The Honorable Hondo Gertz, sir, thank you very much for being here. I think Secretary Gertz pulled out a SOCOM flyby just at the last minute here. But thank you for empowering the team uh, to get Ford finished. Uh, a lot of good work for people for decades. Um, and it, it was just such, uh, a, you're such a great partner and leader for us. Uh, Mr. Stackley's not here with us, I believe, today. Um, but uh, really, uh, he helped mold me. I use that term in an interesting way, uh, or phrase, uh, across several leadership positions. Uh, your efforts and the efforts of others uh, in the crowd really have shaped me to the commander that I am today. I could spend the rest of uh, the day, hours, thanking many in the audience here, or those of us with spirit and, and those uh, with us virtually. Please know I'm appreciative, and I know that our work is not done. I, need, I will need your continued help going forward. Tom, as our acting commander uh, and your family, uh, Debbie and Tom, that are here with us today, thank you for all that you have done, Tom, uh, to lead us into the future. You never looked at this role as a temporary one, but fully embraced the challenge. And the command and I are in a better position because of your efforts. Thanks, Tom. I also want to recognize all of the Navy leadership, our NAVC directorates, our NAVC uh, affiliated program executive officers, and our em employees, and of course, our current and former SES and flag officers that are here. Um, and uh, my partner here, uh, of course, leading this very large 88,000-person uh, command, 90% uh, civilian. Ms. Fan, thank you very much for being here. And our new Command Master Chief, there he is behind the pole, and his uh, wife, Lena. Uh, and what a great start. Uh, the Master Chief did a quick turn from Seventh Fleet, and we got to report aboard the same day. Uh, and former commanders, uh, Admiral Moore and Admiral Galinas, thank you very much for being here, as well as former Executive Directors, Mr. Smirchansky and uh, Mr. DeLine. And of course, we're uh, really honored to have Admiral Caldwell here with us today. Thank you, sir. Very special guest with us today, um, really part of our larger family, uh, the Russo Downey family is Anne and Mazetta Zumwalt. Thank you so much for being here and how much of a part you've played in my career. Thank you. Um, Jill and I are so glad that you're able to attend today. For the audience uh, present and those listening, I'd like to share <clears throat> that yesterday was the 23rd anniversary of the passing of CNO Zumwalt, an amazing Navy national and global leader who, if not for his leadership, many of us would not be here today. Please join me 
in a moment of reflection on CNO Zumwalt's forward thinking, enabling opportunities for many of us. Thank you. And extremely importantly, I really want to extend an extremely warm welcome to our industry partners that are here today. You have my commitment that we will work closely and transparently and that what I will do, I will do all that is possible to team with you and remove barriers to meet our Navy operational requirements. I am fully committed to those requirements and I know you are as well. As I reflect on the recent special assistant duties, I really want to thank Mr. Stephanie, who couldn't be with us here today, and our RDA team for welcoming me and for sharing their insights and expertise over these past six months. The inclusion has illuminated for me areas that all of the acquisition-related SESs and flags need to be aware of and support uh, areas to support to meet the CNO and the SECNAV's goals. Valuable experiences in preparation for today's assumption of, of command. And of course, a special thank you to my wife, Jill, uh, who has uh, endured me for, uh, she's well into her fourth decade. Um, but she's the sane one, so I'll let you figure that out. Uh, our kids, of course, who are not here with us, uh, but their love and patience uh, has helped me get through this uh, transition. Um, many, many moves to count, of course, and amazing experiences. And my, uh, my mom is here today, uh, a spry 92 years old. Her and my dad quit after eight of us. Um, and she reminded me last night and this morning that I am her favorite. So. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> of course, it was just her and I in the room. So, I, <laughs> My sister Susan, who, uh, who uh, brought my mom but stays, uh, takes care of her. And uh, until one year ago, uh, my mom retained our house. Uh, from the 60s, so it's, uh, <clears throat> it's outstanding to have you here. Thank you. And of course, to our larger family and our dads, who are both uh, Navy veterans and past, I think they would be proud today, <clears throat> and their expectations are always present in my thoughts and actions. Regarding our way ahead, I offer the following. In a speech he planned to deliver in Dallas on the 22nd of November, 1963, President John F. Kennedy observed, quote, we in this country, in this generation, are by destiny rather than by choice, the watchmen on the walls of world freedom, unquote. 60 years later, the President's unspoken words still ring true. With the U.S. Navy standing watch on the seas and nav seas, more than 88,000 employees and industry partners delivering the force behind the fleet. Your mission is integral to the defense of the nation. And every day you embrace the core tasks, including delivering ships to the warfighter, on time, ready for tasking at an affordable cost, accelerating readiness with a sense of urgency, and strengthening tech technical expertise while building more effective teams across the enterprise. These priorities support the CNO's guidance to strengthen our warfighters, improve warfighting, and ready the platforms that support them in order to compete and win. They also underpin SECNAV's number one priority to get shipbuilding and maintenance right in efforts to strengthen our maritime dominance. But these tenants central to Secretary Del Toro's Maritime Statecraft Initiative are evolving rapidly in this uncertain era of intense strategic competition. And we need to be ready, not only to evolve with them, but to drive them. What does that mean for NAVC? It means we must deliver on our North Stars. It means high availability of deployable warships. In the coming months, Every component of NAVC will be fine-tuning our, our objectives and desired end states to meet those mission requirements. It also means we must deepen the strategic dialogue 
among warfighters and shipbuilding stakeholders. We'll leverage advances in modeling, virtual reality, artificial intelligence to positively impact costs, to optimize systems, and to improve collaboration across all stakeholders. We'll build capacity in fields like naval architecture, engineering, and life cycle management, as well as technical expertise in nuclear welding, robotics, software management, and additive manufacturing. And we'll apply these cutting edge technologies, public and private investments, and strategic statecraft in balancing current readiness investments and future modernization efforts. So as we move forward in this great journey together, I invite you to think differently about how we execute our work, to constantly self-assess, self-correct when needed, and to keep a learning mindset to invite critical thinking and problem solving, to harness collaboration in finding more efficient ways to align industry capacity and capability with fleet requirements, to recruit talent and to nurture those around you, and to embrace change and innovation and constantly ask, what's next? If you're not sure where to begin, Navy's Get Real, Get Better core tenants are a great place to start. Our Navy is operating in a highly complex and uncertain environment. Our ships and submarines are deterring conflict in multiple areas of responsibility. They're responding to aggressive acts against allies, partner nations, and international com commercial shipping. And they're succeeding in their mission because of you and the NAVC legacy of excellence in shipbuilding design, construction, and maintenance. 57 years ago this May, a young Caroline Kennedy christened the nation's last christened the nation's last conventional aircraft carrier named uh, in, uh, in, in name of her, fa her late father's honor, CV-67. President Lyndon Johnson marked the occasion with these words, quote, John Kennedy understood that strength is essential to sustain freedom, unquote. And he lamented that the nation's role has not been easy. Quote, it has always required not only strength, but patience, courage, and sacrifice. Today, more than a half century later, these are the characteristics imprinted across NAVC. Next year, the Honorable Caroline Kennedy will again christen a U.S. aircraft carrier named after her father, CVN-79. She is more than 90% complete and will be second in the Gerald R. Ford class of large deck nuclear powered aircraft carriers, offering a revolutionary leap in warfighting capabilities. Across this enterprise, we are building ships and submarines and in introducing technological advances in unmanned warfare and combat systems that will deliver world-class maritime capability for the nation. I thank you for entrusting me with command of this remarkable enterprise. And as we close, in the words of uh, one of our Navy's great heroes, former CNO Elmo Zumwaltz, I, er I, I offer the following, quote, I urge each of you to approach our profession with the fullest measure of imagination, enthusiasm, and dedication to make the Navy as effective and ready as possible. We face an exciting future. It is full of challenge, responsibility, and opportunity." Unquote. An exciting future indeed. Thank you all very much for being here and for your support going forward. Guests, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the conclusion of the ceremony and the departure of the official party and their families. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for your presence with us here today and for your blessing on this transition of authority. We thank you for Rear Admiral Anderson and his family 
as he leaves the Nafsi Helm, we pray that you would smile on them and grant them success in all that is to come. We thank you for preparing Vice Admiral Downey and bringing him to Navsi to lead it into the future. We thank you for his family and for blessing them as they have blessed him. In this day when America's Navy finds itself in the headlines as the protector of sea lanes and the projector of diplomacy, we pray that you would bless Admiral Downey and his team with the ability to equip our Navy to mission success. Multiply their work that the United States would stay safe and free. As we depart, we ask your blessing on each of us. May we do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. We ask it all in your holy name. Amen.